decided to compare uh, the, CR, the CR, CR versus exercise because this was one study, you know the study that was published by Otto Holodzy in 1997 comparing ad libitum fat sedentary animals uh, um, the, the, the first, the first uh, line with uh, animals that were exercising, animals that were sedentary but calorie restricted and uh, the combination of calorie restriction and exercise and only the CR rats had an extension in both maximal and average lifespan instead of the exercise had only an extension in average lifespan. Yes? Was exercise defined? For example, let, 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 me, let, me, let me explain you why. I mean, these, the, the exercise animals were much leaner than the sedentary ad libitum fat animals, and they were even leaner than the CR animals. So basically, they had less body fat and more muscle fat and more muscle mass than the CR animals. But they were running on a. On a, on a the, the male rats, rats likes to, to run on a, on a wheel. Uh, and, 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 and the body composition of, the, the, of, their, of, of their, th their body composition was completely different from the controls and from the CR at the end of, after, after few, few weeks of, of, of intervention. So this is our, these are the baseline characteristic of the, of the three groups of the um, control trial. As you can see, they were measured by ma ma magnetic resonance. This is just an example of uh, one CR, this is subcute fat, white, and here is visceral fat, white within the viscera, and this is after one year of CR, minus 40% visceral fat, minus 58% subcute fat, and this is exercise again. After one year, minus 53% in the this is just to show you the, the, the images of what happened in terms of decreasing body fat. What happened to leptin and adiponectin? As expected, leptin dropped equally in both CR and exercise, almost more than 30% drop, and uh, adiponectin went up. So, of course, they become more insulin sensitive and uh, In fact, glucose dropped in both CR and exercise and insulin also. What is interesting here is that we asked the exercise, we, we wanted to, to understand the chronic effect, not, and not the acute effect of exercise, because as you know, exercise has acute effects and chronic effects. The acute effects are due to uh, many mechanisms, but one of the most important is the expression of glutifor from the cytoplasm to the plasma membrane that is transient. If you stop exercising after 48 hours, uh, glutifor goes back from the mem from plasma membrane to the cytoplasm, and so you lose the acute effect. So we wanted to, 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 to see what happens chronically when you exercise, so th if the if the chronic effects of exercise in are, are, are the same as the chronic effect of calorie restriction. And so that's why, for example, here glucose is significant, the decrease in glucose is significant in the CR, but not in the exercise, because these, these persons were asked to stop exercising for at least 48 hours before the testing and the blood draw. It's clear? So the glycemia dropped from 95 to 89, and insulin from 7.1 to 4.1. So definitely they are more insulin sensitive. C-reactive protein, <coughs> a good marker of inflammation, dropped significantly only in the CR group. We don't know why, but that's, these, these are the data. And total cholesterol, dropped significantly only in the CR from 212 to 190, LDL from 130 to 111 only uh, in both, but in, in both this, the CR and exercise. HDL, of course, 
as we know, uh, exercise has an important effect in rising uh, HDL. It was, it, it's, it was individualized based on their baseline VO2 max, based on their muscle mass, because, you know, to obtain six, six, six kilograms deficit in, in percent body fat, it, it depends. If you, have no, if you have very little muscle mass, you have to exercise probably six hours uh, a day. If you, if you have a decent m m muscle mass and you have a, a already a baseline high VO2 max, you have to exercise much less to, to burn the same amount of calories. So there is not uh, uh, an exact number, but uh, I have to look at the data, the, 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 the average. I, I don't have in, in mind which was the average, but I can tell you it was very different between individuals. But there are, the, the, the paper should be, has been accepted on Journal of Gerontology uh, so it should be out probably in, in, in a couple of months. Uh, okay, HDL cholesterol was significantly higher only in the exercise. There was a tendency for, for CR, but only in the, in the exercisers. Instead, triglycerides were significantly lower from 128 to 98 in the CR. And here the, there are a couple of people who who are driving these, these uh, in the healthy lifestyle, but exercise unexpectedly didn't. Probably this has, has something to do with the 48-hour restriction before, before uh, the testing. Anyway, the, the total cholesterol HDL ratio was significantly improved in both CR and exercise. And systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure was significantly improved only in the CR, but not significantly. Probably because they started from a very low blood pressure baseline, 118, 68. So probably that's why you, these data are not really impressive. The 10-year coronary heart disease risk score, based on Framingham score, was significantly improved. Of only in the, in the CR, significantly. How do you make the restriction, they have a reduction of half of the risk of, of, of developing tumors. And this is a study of, that Dr. Holozy did, comparing uh, ad libitum, sedentary ad libitum fed animals uh, f uh, with pear-fed sedentary and these were exerciser animals and these were calorie-restricted animals. So you see the extension in average lifespan and maximum lifespan and in the exercise only the extension in average lifespan. But look, look at here the cause of death. Basically, neoplasia only in the CR animal was half than in the exercise. So, and there are other studies suggesting that exercise has not a powerful effect in reducing the risk of cancer, at least in rodents. But rodents are not humans. And... Uh, in fact, mice and rats, they do not develop cardiovascular diseases unless they have an APOE mutation or other type of mutation. Also, if you place them on a high cholesterol diet, so they are resistant to cardiovascular disease, or at least atherosclerotic ca ca cardiovascular disease. They have a different type of metabolism, and the type of cancer they develop, they are completely different from the type of cancer that are affecting human beings. In fact, the type of cancer that affect human beings, as you can see, are both in men and women, the most prevalent are prostate and breast cancer, lung cancer, and colon rectum cancer. 
these are the most prevalent cancer in, 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 in humans. Instead of I think in rodents are lymphoma, leukemia, and ca uh, liver cancer, other, other, other different type of cancer. So I think it's always uh, difficult to speculate what happens in rodents to what happens in humans. I mean, of course, it's, it's, it's interesting, but it's, we have to be very careful when we shift data from rodents to, to humans. But there is no doubt in my mind that nutrition has an important effect in, in, uh, in, the, in the incidence in the pathogenesis of cancer, and I, 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 I think that everybody know, uh, know these studies on, on uh, Japanese that, uh, that um, they, they did migrate to Hawaii and uh, stomach cancer dropped after one generation instead of breast cancer went up, prostate cancer went up, colon cancer went up. So genes are not changing in one generation so that has something to do with, with lifestyle probably diet probably exercise but diet I think plays a major role this is just to summarize what I think could be a link between different growth factors and cancer and probably aging I think so calorie protein an increase in calorie and protein intake cause a excess a deposit excessive adiposity that is causing inflammation decreasing adiponectin increasing resistance so insulin resistance and increasing insulin concentrations and a decrease in IGFN binding protein 1 and 2 and an increased level of insulin co causes through NF NFKB activation, AP AP1 activation, an increased proliferation and a decrease apoptosis. Calorie protein intake are also a regulator of, of IGF-1 and, and PDGF are the two growth factors that are, again, increasing proliferation and decreasing apoptosis. Also pro-inflammatory cytokines are activating NF NF NFKB, AP1 and causing proliferation, cell proliferation and decreased apoptosis. And other, other hormones like estrogen and testosterone, other an anabolic hormones are also causing the same effect. And they are all increasing the chance of tumor development wait Oop. and one, one, one possible explanation is that if you have a tumor gene and you have a carcinogenic, a carcinogenic substance oxidative stress you have a mutation if you are in a low proliferative state because you have low IGF-1, low T3, uh, low inflammation, low anabolic hormones, uh, you have time for repair the DNA damage or if the DNA damage is not repairable to let the cell to go in apoptosis. And eventually you repair the tumor gene and so you have, a, you have time for the repair or, or, or to delete the, that, that damaged cell. But if you are in a high proliferative state, so if you, are, if you are on a high protein, high energy diet, you have this overactivation of, of NFKB, AP1 and other, other pathways that are basically slowing are decreasing the time for repair and we know that are also decreasing they are shutting down the apoptotic response and so you have a higher chance of having yeah. okay other risk factors that are associated 
that are in line with these hypotheses that, for example, this is an interesting study published on JAMA in 2005, and you can see that independently of BMI, BMI less than 20, BMI between 20 and 23, more than 23, the higher the fasting serum glucose, and therefore the higher the insulin, because if they have higher glucose, they have also higher insulin, the higher the risk of developing, of, of, of dying of all type of cancer. Oh my gosh, again. Better. And uh, here is just to show you that fasting glucose in the, the CR have significantly lower glucose and insulin than most of people eating a typical American diet. And, and so, for example, in this way, exercise can have probably in humans a protective effect against cancer because if you cut down insulin, one of the pathways that are leading to increased prolifer cell proliferation and decreased apoptosis is shut down. It, 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 it's, it's decreased in, in the, also in the exercise. These are other markers of insulin resistance, HOMA and Matsuda, to show that both the CR and the exercise are more insulin resistant than the controls.